You know, they say first impressions are everything. And the first thing you see when you walk into my cottage is this humble beaded chandelier lamp. Come on in. I've had this beaded chandelier lamp for so long and I really still love it. I think it just needs a little bit of zhuzhing, it needs a little bit more impact as I'm dressing other parts of the room. I was thinking a ceiling medallion that I make myself and then was thinking here, a couple more garlands of beading just here and here and figure out how to do things, of course, on a little bit of a budget because I don't know if this light fixture will be here forever, but it is here for now. So why not make the best of it, right? In the cottage right now, I have lots of little touches of rattan and caning. And I was thinking that maybe I can turn a rattan tray or basket upside down into a ceiling medallion. I think I would like that better than a white generic ceiling medallion. Okay, here are my beads. I'm going to be dealing with four different sizes. Here is my basic schemata. A large one in the center, the next size flanking, the next size twice flanking, and the next size down another twice flanking on either side, and then the smallest sides to fill the rest. This bead pattern matches the pattern of the beading that exists on the chandelier right now. I am using, you can use thread, you can use twine. I am using a very flexible bead wire. And I cut off. So ultimately I want the strand I measured. I want my garland to be about 16 inches. I want a 16 inch loop. Here's my largest size. So let me do that first, because that's going to be smack in the middle. Okay, so that's going to be, that's going to be in the middle. And then, pattern, I'm going to go to the next size and flank either side of that bigger center ball. I'm listening to my favorite podcast and I'll create four of these garlands that are 16 inches long. I've already started my smaller garland strands. These shorter beaded strands will drape inside the larger garlands. And I need to put two more on either side to fit my design. And then I always like to I always like to knot at the end. Just a little knot here. Just to hold it so it doesn't slip. Now that I have all of my beads stranded and ready to go, I needed to figure out a way, an easy way to attach the bead strands to the chandelier. Now, the frame of the chandelier is one round wire frame, and the rim of the wire frame is right where I can possibly hang a clip and then tie my garlands to that clip. And I happen to have these really handy Command Brand decorating clips in my toolkit and they're used to like when you have little fairy lights or little Christmas lights and you want to you want to guide them along the wall or something then these are going to do it. Now each clip if you can see each clip they have a nice little arm here there you go there's a nice little arm there and this arm will click onto the wireframe of the lampshade. What I like about these is that they're clear, so you really can't see them, and they're very sturdy. 
I'm going to hang my beaded strands so the tops of the strands are 11 inches in width from end to end. Okay, now that the beading is all done, and I'm liking the way it's looking, it's nice. I want to deal with some ideas on how to create my own rattan covered ceiling medallion. Here is this pretty little tray. It's scalloped, of course, and I thought I could take the tray, turn it upside down, the idea is not to remove any of the electrical because I'm not good with that. And just, I get nervous. So the idea is to somehow affix this to the ceiling, cut this in half, and it will be my ceiling medallion. Okay, first things first is I have to cut a hole that is going to be the same diameter as my electrical lighting box on the top of the ceiling. So let me cut that out first. I'm gonna probably use these cutters and maybe some wire cutters. So let's see what I've got here. I don't know about you, but I find that these I don't even know what they're called, these wire cutters or wire scissors, metal scissors, they, they really do cut all these materials that you can't cut with regular scissors. And then we have to cut into the side so that this will fit around the current lighting fixture. Let's go through here. There's some metal here, so. I just had to move it to the ground because I need to get a little bit of leverage. press down both my hands there we go Triangle. there you go all right so I've got my hole I've got my open access on the side I'm gonna be able to clean this all up once I get it installed now the only thing that's left, um, the tray handles, I'm gonna try to fill that in with some rattan. I have this left over from another basket. I want to hide this cut kind of in the back. So let's stick that in the back. And because the hole is pretty tight, you don't need any nails or glue to hold this thing up. It just holds up on its own, which is nice. Right here is the cut, and I just use a little bit of the jewelry wire to tie it closed. And you really can't see it from far away. All right, you guys, what do you think of my new and improved beaded chandelier?
I'm really happy with it. And I love the little, it's almost like it's wearing a little hat. So me. <laughs> All right, well give it a try in your small space. And for more small space tips and tricks, I'll see you right here at Nutshell Living. Bye.